All right, all right. Thanks for stopping by. So I'm in Parker. I'm out on BLM land. Actually, it's on the California side of the river, but I'm about probably eight or ten miles from Parker. All right, we had to move it inside the van. It's just too much wind noise outside. So today I want to talk about choosing a vehicle. Let's say you want to try this nomad lifestyle or this van life, whatever the kids are calling it these days. I don't know, but let's say you want to try it and you're trying to determine what vehicle to get. Well, I'm here to try to encourage you to stay as small as possible. I had looked at very small vans like micro vans. And unfortunately for me, it just, I needed a little bit more room for that. And if you need a large vehicle, hey, knock yourself out. It's your business. That's up to you. But what I would like to try to make you keep in mind is the money it's going to cost when you start traveling for fuel alone. Yesterday, I spent 100 bucks at the pump. 100 smackers at the pump. And I have a 2017 GMC Savannah 2500 standard old run-of-the-mill cargo van. Nothing fancy. And you can get them um, every day of the week for less than $20,000. What U-Haul does is they rotate their stock out. And this is an old U-Haul van. Just like uh, you know when Bob Wells had that GMC Savannah. His was an old U-Haul uh, van. And uh, most of the time they're going to have less than 15,000 miles on them. And that's how I pick mine up, you know, so you can stay well under $20,000 and get a really good vehicle. Now, you might even want to consider a micro van. I don't know if you've seen these things like the Nissan NV and the, um, I think they're called the 200. And then there's the, the Ford uh, Transit Connect or minivan. If I wasn't so tall, I would have done that. I really would have. So I needed just a little more room to build up, you know, for the bed. Now, I cannot stand up in this van. Um, I just got a good pad to put on the floor, the kind like a, a barber would stand on while they're cutting your hair. Very good quality pad. And I'd shuffle around in here. And, you know, I can reach everything with my long arms anyway. So it's not a big deal not being able to stand up in the van and... I really thought it was. Now, there are times to this day, I toy around with the idea of getting high top added to this van or trading this van and getting a Ford Transit high top or something like that. But I'm not going to do that. Gosh, those vans with the high tops like a Transit or a ProMaster, they start at what, like 40 grand? That's over twice what I paid for this. I'm not doing that. You know, I'd rather have the money for adventure and not have to go back to work than to have that van. Now, if you want that van, knock yourself out. Enjoy it. But what I have seen so far on the road, traveling around, filling up with fuel a lot, the gas prices are going to bust your budget, and they may even crush your vibe and your whole joy for this kind of life. Now, with that being said, let's say you plan on going out to a camping spot and staying for two weeks or more in the same spot. Well, hey, don't worry about anything I just said. Go get yourself a big um, Class C or travel trailer or whatever and a, a big diesel truck to pull it with or whatever. Because you're not going to be driving much anyway. And it's probably going to balance itself out if you're only driving you know, a couple hundred miles a month. Unfortunately, I'm doing a lot more than that. Uh, yesterday, I went up to Williams, which is up on I-40. Just got a wild hair and wanted to go up, see the snow and the mountains and the pines. I'd been in the desert so long. So I did, took a day trip up there, stayed the night up there in a little spot, and came back down the next day. And now I'm in Parker. Well, I'm right outside of Parker. I'm on the California side of the Colorado River, but it's still considered Parker BLM. And um, I'm going to have to get gas again soon. You know, I've got under half a tank now. So that's how quickly you can spend money on fuel. Now, i got to sit still for a few days because 
that's the way my budget works. You know, I'm trying to do this on 1200 a month. And majority of the time I've been successful in that. There's been two months I went over. Looks like this month I'll be right on schedule. But I'm going to sit still here on BLM land for about three or four days before I go anywhere. I'm just going to chill down. Um, I have plenty of food and water. Got good internet signal so I can, uh, you know, browse those wonderful YouTube channels. But I feel that I would be derelict in my duties if I did not tell you how much money you're going to spend on fuel out here. There's going to be so many times when, uh, let's say you meet up with a tribe of friends and they come by and say, hey, we're going to Yuma. You want to come along? You want a caravan? Well, of course you want to, but you can't because your rig gets 10 miles to the gallon and it's not in your budget to do that at the moment. So you got to sit still and maybe you will catch up with them later. Maybe you won't. A beautiful thing is when you can just turn the key and go anytime you want to. If money's not an issue, good for you. But for the vast majority of us, it is. So choosing a vehicle that's fuel efficient is going to afford you the luxury to get out and explore more. If you're on Google Maps one night, just browsing around and you see an interesting national forest you want to go check out, then you, my friend, can get up the next morning, crank your vehicle, and head out that way, whether it's 100 miles or 400 miles, because you have a fuel-efficient vehicle, and it's not going to bust your budget to go do that spur-of-the-moment trip. Next thing, how much time do you actually spend in your vehicle? Well, some days, if the weather is rainy, um, you can avoid staying in your van. Get yourself a tent one of those nice screen canopies and you can uh, you know relax in it you don't have to be in your vehicle this is just in case you do choose a small vehicle and you just don't want to sit in it all evening you know let's say it starts raining at 10 in the morning and uh, if you don't have a tent with you and you've got a little small micro camper guess what you're gonna to have to be sitting in your vehicle unless you just want to sit out in the rain and I doubt you're gonna to want to do that so um, there's ways around just always going for the big vehicle. I had a dream that I had a Prius and a yurt. And I thought, wow, that would be, that might be a way to go too. A Prius and a yurt. Just set that bad boy up when you get to your campground. That way you don't have to spend so much time in your vehicle. I know, so a yurt is probably not going to fit in a Prius. But anyway, you get where I'm going with that. Just, uh, you know, do your best to stay as small and as fuel efficient as you can, it's really, really important. Fuel costs are off the charts right now. So uh, we'll wrap it up. I'm gonna leave you with some footage of me milling around the campsite. So until next time, take care, be well, and smash the bell.